Hello my little flowers, welcome to the channel, my name is Sunny. So I've mentioned once before, but I'm an art student who attends school at a prestigious college in Chicago. In the summertime, I'm in Texas, generally doing nothing but catering to my artistic whimsy and occasionally doing serious stuff. You know, working on my career, <laughs> which brings up the topic. What do I want for my career? If any of you guys are artists, you might know that there is somewhat of a divide in the way that gallery art or high art is portrayed as opposed to social media art and entertainment type of art. What I see are two different ways of storytelling, but the world sees this quite differently. I've always wanted to bring the two together in some way. While oftentimes one might look at gallery art and think, they take themselves too seriously. With individual paintings selling millions, entire exhibitions in museums being made for a particular genre or famous artist. With newspaper articles and journals detailing the strict critique of the artist's methods and subject. It might seem very elusive to some people. It might even seem too strict. Too clicky. Too serious. And, in my opinion, that can be true to some extent. But like with entire fandoms being demonized for a small minority of fans, that assessment lacks nuance and is unfair to those who partake in the community in a generous and sincere way. People tend not to see the young artist with a sparkle in their eyes as they look towards their future at the painting hanging glamorously on the gallery wall. They read the description with intent and realize that the person who painted this decades ago was just another person like them. Somebody who saw the world and portrayed it because they wanted to. Did they know it was going to end up there? Probably not, but it did. Or the student who is told that they had so much potential in this other field but was absolutely fixated and enamored by the genre of art that included exhibitions, showcases, and artist residencies. This little niche hidden world that communicated in a strange yet surprisingly understandable way. And when an artist talked about their painting that sat there, the smell of oil paint permeating your nose, their words are like freeform poetry. When suddenly, the perspective shifts, and you see a whole new image in that artwork, and a whole new person in that artist. So, you might be thinking to yourself, Hey, that sounds a lot like what I experienced while watching my favorite TV show. I followed this animator on Instagram, and I got some inspirational insight on their idea for creating my favorite piece of media. I read this book once, and it changed me. Then I went on and met the author. I followed this YouTube account and the things they said shifted my perspective on the world. Things might seem elusive and unapproachable at first, but when you take the time to let it be explained to you, you might see the value in it. One might say, well that type of art isn't for me, and that's understandable. I feel like a lot of people see social media art as way more approachable and down to earth. A lot of these people don't speak in riddles, they give advice on art. Everything seems straightforward. That might inspire you more. You might feel pitted against this outer community of art due to the fact that it seems against you. I'll get to that later in the video. So, outsider art. Outsider art is a term used to describe people who are artists, but don't go to art school. People who have no formal education, yet create art anyway. These people are called outsider artists because they're seen as too naive to know about and are thus not influenced by the public perception of art at the time. And the silly thing is, you don't need an education to make art. You make art because art makes you. People who choose to make art might feel like building upon that initial desire and have it be guided by people with more experience 
either by mentors or going to school. They might also choose to do this because of building a reputation, which can be desirable in any profession you might choose to follow. Many well-known artists are these so-called outsiders, and ironically, I learned about them the most while in art history class in college. These are people who reinvented the art genre in so many ways. Creators of comics, illustrations, poster art. We learn about many influential outsider artists in school, and we relate to them, even though by definition, we are not. We admire their courage, their strength to go their own way, their stories. Being an outsider artist can mean many different things depending on who you ask. And then we have social media. Social media has given a whole new voice to people of all walks of life. A lot of times, social media can be paradoxically personal and down to earth, while also elusive, judgmental, and fake in its own way. It redirects the authority to create and be seen by people away from the traditional middleman who dictates who can be seen, and seemingly gives that power to the artists themselves. Well, of course, we all know algorithms have a say in that. But the point is, with social media, many very unexpected things become trending and popular. While the avant-garde in the traditional art scene tends to take a really long time to turn heads and often becomes even more popular in retrospect. The opposite is often true for social media. We can see social media as a different beast entirely, and often it is, but the similarities are still striking. Artists who are passionate popularity, catering to the audience, culture that thrives from intertwining influences, and those who defy it. Both are toxic and very exclusive in their own ways, with their own arbitrary rules of creating, and the harsh truth is, the consequences of defiance might either mean withdrawn support, which could be enough to kill the art spirit, or extremely high praise and influence. But the consequence of compliance might also have the same two outcomes. So, where does that put me? Well, I'd say in a marvelous position. The truth is I'm scared. The truth is I'm scared to admit that I'm scared in the first place. The truth is I don't know. But my point is, we were all outsider artists at some point. Us artists had to start somewhere. Social media can give a new voice to the outsider artists, and I admire that so much. There's so much value in the art world of social media and YouTube. I want to let these people who feel like outsiders know that they're included. I want to bridge a gap of knowledge between us two, these so-called gallery artists and these so-called social media artists. Let us know that we're both valid. And I'm really passionate about that because right now I'm feeling like an outsider myself. So what do I want for my career? I want to help us understand each other. I was so scared to begin a YouTube channel thinking it would close doors to galleries I want to exhibit in. It might turn off collectors and art dealers that I want to buy my work. Who would come to my showcases? Well, I guess we'll see. Because I think I'm done being afraid of trying new things. I'm tired of letting the straw man of what I think the art community will react to my various ways of storytelling stop me from even trying. I don't know much yet. But I know I won't give up or limit myself because of what I perceive to be my limitations. I was that kid who adored the artists in galleries, who studied books of old masters, who read articles of the new ones. But I also love social media art. I love YouTubers. I love cartoons. And I'm still that kid. And I guess that's okay. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this video. I decided to be a little bit more personal today, so 
I hope you liked it, and if you do, and you want to support me, um, you know, go ahead and like and subscribe if that's something that you want to do, and I'll see you soon. They're words like freeform permit permit. Fuck. Sip 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 coffee.